Yukosa peeps, today I'm going to be talking about all the run-ins I've had with the police in Japan. So awesome. This video is brought to you by all my Patreon supporters. Go Team Austin! Before I begin, I'm just going to say I'm not saying the cops are good or bad. I'm just simply going to be telling my experiences. I've heard stories from other foreigners that say cops are really awesome, while other foreigners say cops really suck. So I guess it depends on each person. And of course it depends on the cop as well because cops are human and some cops are nice while some cops aren't. Also keep in mind that I haven't had much experience with cops in other countries. All I know is from what I see on the news and the media. But it seems from the stories that I've heard, Japanese cops aren't that bad. I'm sure there's violent, racist, and corrupt cops in every country, so I'm sure there's some in Japan as well. Luckily, I haven't met any of those. At least, I don't think I have. You be the judge. Let's get started. But before I begin, I just want to let you know about my free newsletter. I send it out once a month. In that newsletter, I have links to videos that are not available on YouTube, as well as articles about the dark side of Japan that are free to read. If you're interested in getting that newsletter, please subscribe. The link is in the information section below. So I'm going to be talking about four different situations I had in Japan, and each of them happened in a different city. Let's start with one of my first experiences in Nagoya. <laughs> Nagoya was the first place I came to in Japan. I had moved there fresh out of university. I had no experience working and I had no experience teaching or even speaking the Japanese language. I was working at Ione Kaiwa and my school was located right in the heart of the city of Nagoya. One of my students was a university student named Atsushi and me and him hit it off, we became really good friends. After his classes, we would usually go out for izakaya for like drinks or dinner or karaoke or sometimes we'd even go to his house because he used to play the guitar and he was teaching me how to play guitar. So one day we went drinking and then we went to do some karaoke and when we left the place it was already past the last train so we had to pretty much kill time until the new train started around 5 30 in the morning. We decided to walk around Nagoya city just because it was nothing better to do and it was nice weather and suddenly a police car drove up, um, flashed its lights and then stopped us. And of course I was freaked out because I didn't speak any Japanese, I'd never met a cop in Japan and I didn't know anything about the cops in Japan so I was kind of freaking out. And what really freaked me out was the cops appearance, they were really like tough guy looking and they like didn't smile, they were very like forceful, they kind of like approached us like badass so it was kind of like scary. They said something in Japanese which I'm sure was like let me see your ID and so Atsushi told me to pull out my ID and he pulled out his ID and we gave it over to the cops. As soon as they saw our ID their demeanor completely changed. It was it was like magic how they changed from like the Terminator to like Jim Carrey. Their voices became really high and they started like bowing a lot and shaking and like twitching and stuff. It was as if they were like really uncomfortable. They gave us back our IDs, they bowed profusely many times, got into their car and drove away while bowing. So I asked Atsushi what went down because I didn't understand any of that. So apparently the police thought we were two Vietnamese people who had been like riding around in our motorcycle pickpocketing or like grabbing purses off of ladies and so they assumed that we were the, those two suspects. But when they saw that Atsushi was Japanese and he was a student at Chiba University which is a very like high-end university they realized their mistake. Then when they saw that I was a Canadian and then they found out that I was an English teacher in, in Nagoya, they got even more embarrassed. And although I was relieved, I felt kind of awkward. I kind of felt like I was profiled. I didn't look Asian or Vietnamese, but I guess the two cops just saw two guys walking and one of them looked non-Japanese. So they just assumed these must be two criminal Vietnamese people. I kind of felt bad for other Asians that are not Japanese because they are probably profiled like me and Atsushi were. And I was kind of glad that I was Canadian. All right, so this next incident happened in Osaka and it's really weird. Well, I was living in Chiba, but I wanted to meet my parents because they were coming to visit me in Japan. But their connection was through Osaka. So we decided to meet in Osaka and then go from there to Kyoto and Tokyo and so on for traveling. My plane arrived in Osaka early morning, but my parents' plane wasn't set to arrive until the evening. So I was stuck in Osaka for about six hours. I roamed around the airport a bit. I spent some time sitting in the cafe and just like watching YouTube and killing time. But there was a point where I needed to um, charge my cell phone so I went to one of those seating areas in front of the gates where they have the, the outlets for charging your phone. I took out my charger, I plugged in my phone and just as I was about to sit down this man came walking up to me. He was in like a, a black suit and he was like a very official looking guy. He looked like Japanese FBI or something and he came up to me and then he pulled out his badge and 
he asked me in Japanese、um, if I spoke Japanese. And even though at that time I could kind of get by, I just said, Sorry, I, I only speak English. And then he quickly changed to English, which was surprisingly good. He asked me for my passport, he asked me for like my plane ticket, and he asked me what I was doing at the airport. I, I told him I had just come from Chiba and I was just waiting for my parents who were arriving from Canada. And I was just killing time at the airport. So I thought that would be the end of it, that he would give me back my passport and my flight ticket, and then he would just like go off on his way. But he actually said, let's sit down over here, and he pulled me towards like this like loungy area. Then he started asking me about religion. He started asking me what I thought about Christianity, Hinduism, Islam, and Buddhism. And then I thought maybe he's like trying to convert me. But then he switched over to talking about terrorism and about. How the Islamic culture gets blamed for a lot of terrorism, but、uh, most of the people of Islam are peaceful and stuff like that. But then he changed the subject completely and then he started talking about all these other social issues. He started talking about abortion and slavery in America and then the death penalty and capitalism versus communism and stuff like that. I honestly didn't know what he wanted from me and I didn't know what to say, so I just kind of like. Answered his questions as best as I could. After more than an hour later, he finally like looked at his watch and he was like, Oh, oh, we've been talking for so long.、Uh, all right, well, I gotta go. It was nice talking to you.、Uh, good luck and have fun with your parents. And then he left. That was really weird. The next situation that I had run in with the cops was in Tokyo. So before I became an ALT where I am now, I used to work as a kindergarten teacher. And as this kindergarten teacher, I was actually a traveling kindergarten teacher. So I would travel from one kindergarten to another each day. Sometimes in Chiba, sometimes in Tokyo, sometimes in Saitama, it would depend. And since my job was going to a different kindergarten each day, I didn't have like an office or a classroom. I had a backpack. And in my backpack, I had everything I would need for the day. So I'd have clothes and indoor shoes and toys and flashcards and. Folders and paper, and anything I needed for that day of teaching. So, on this day, I was heading to work with my giant backpack. I was at a station called Hirai Station in Tokyo. I had my headphones on because I always had to travel like an hour and a half or more、um, on the train, so I would just listen to music on the way. Then, when I got off at Hirai Station with my music, I kept walking. I was walking towards my kindergarten. I kind of, through my peripheral vision, saw like a car stop and like two guys in suits get out. And kind of they were walking towards me, but I just assumed they were like businessmen or like real estate agents or something, and they were just kind of like following me, but probably going the same direction. And then they kind of tried to stop me, they kind of like waved at me, but I just ignored them for a bit because I didn't know if they were actually waving at me or to someone else. Then they got closer and they started saying something, but I thought they were trying to like sell me something. So I was like, no, 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 I'm good, thank you. No, thank you for this, thank you for this.、Um, but then they actually like got in front of me and they pulled out their badges. And then I realized they were plain clothes cops. They said I was just randomly stopped. Nothing to do with racial profiling at all. So they said. They asked me where do I work. And、uh, I was just in front of my school, so I pointed behind them. And they turned around and they saw a temple with a whole bunch of kids running around. And then when they looked back at me, I opened my bag and I pulled out、um, my little frog sensei, my sidekick.、Um, we called him Green Kun. So I pulled that out and I showed them that I had like kindergarten stuff in my bag.、And、as soon as they saw my frog and they saw the kids, right on cue, some kids noticed that I was standing there and they started screaming, Oh sensei, oh sensei, good morning. They weren't as like nice and apologetic and bowing as the ones in Nagoya. They were just like, Oh, oops, here you go, see ya. And they just left. And the final experience I'm going to talk about is with the Chiba police. So I was actually walking my dog. And、uh, Maple stopped to pee, and when he was peeing, I was just standing there, and there was a bus stop, and this car pulled up to the bus stop. And behind the car, the bus came, and it was trying to get to the bus stop to let people off, but the car was blocking it, so it honked. But the guy didn't move the car, he waited like another 30 seconds, then a woman on the passenger side got out and went into the building. And then I thought he would move his car, but he still didn't move the car, and then the bus honked again. And then the car still wasn't moving, and the guy still wasn't moving, so the car, the bus honked again, and that's when the guy got out of the car. He went to the, to the window of the bus driver and started banging on it, like punching the window, and started yelling in that Japanese Yakuza style way where they always use the R's, you know, like, yurra, 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 like that kind of yelling. And then the bus driver was like, You have to move because I'm trying to get these passengers out. But then the guy just kept yelling and the yarra yarra, and then 
he said call the police and then the bus driver was like just move your car so I can go and he's like no and so then the bus driver had to call the police and he had to get everyone out of the bus and they had to all wait even though they didn't want to get up at that stop and while they were waiting for the police to arrive all these people who had gathered outside of the bus were like staring down at this guy who, who he went back into his car and he was sitting in the driver's seat and they were all kind of like giving him dirty looks finally the police came and then one cop went to the bus driver and started talking to him and then one cop went to the guy in the driver's seat and started talking to him the cop talking to the bus driver then came over to me and he's like uh, the bus driver told us that you saw the whole thing so can you tell us what happened in Japanese and I basically told them what happened and then uh, they thanked me they took my name my phone number my address and uh, it was, it was, they're actually pretty nice um, and they just uh, let me go because I guess that's all the information they needed from me the, the police officer even though he couldn't speak English he was really polite he was really kind he even like pet maple and like asked me what kind of dog he was and stuff like that so he seemed like a really nice cop so all in all I've had pretty decent um, interactions with the cop but one thing I have to say is no matter what the situation was I never felt in like real danger sometimes I felt like they were kind of looking down on me or they're kind of kind of being racially profiling or racist a bit but I didn't feel like there was like a violent attitude or like a really angry like I just want one reason to arrest this guy kind of feeling at all it was a very professional normal uh, interaction with the police I felt like the police were trained very well to like calmly talk to people and de-escalate rather than escalate a situation so I thought that was really cool and with the Osaka cop I think he was just bored and he wanted to have a free English conversation Anyway, that's been the inter interactions I've had with the cops. I know there must be some foreigners that have much different experiences and might have more negative things to say about them. But in my case, it wasn't that bad. Anyway, let me know how the cops are in your country or if you live in Japan, if you've had any experiences with Japanese cops, let me know in the information section below. And that's it for today. So thanks for watching. If you do want to see more videos that are not on YouTube, you can go to my Patreon and there's hundreds of videos there available for you to watch. Once again, if you want to subscribe to my newsletter, the link is also down below. It's also free. So please thumbs up if you like this video and share. And if you haven't already, subscribe because my videos are awesome. Aussie awesome. Take care and see you next time. Peace. Edward cut it. Isn't it wild? Right down there.